Hello my lovely friends, my name is Ava and here are the 12 books that I read last month in June. I read 12 books and actually quite a few of those are rereads, which I'm fine with. I love rereading books, like they're actually really fun. So um, let's just get right into it. We're gonna go in the order that I read them. First, I actually reread Barbarian's Redemption by Ruby Dixon. This is one of my favorite Ruby Dixon books of all time. It's probably my favorite IPB Ice Planet Barbarian book. Um, this is the romance between Beck and Ellie. I think I've read this book like over six times in my life. Um, I love it so much. I just re-listened to the audiobook. I think I was just wanting a comfort read and um, needing something to like listen to to fall asleep. And this one was the one to choose. Ellie has been a human slave in the um, galaxy since she was literally a little girl and that's all she's ever known. And she is absolutely terrified when she shows up on this ice planet. Beck ends up realizing that Ellie is his fated mate but he don't mess up like he messed up with like buying these humans he doesn't understand like what he did when he bought these humans he just thought he was going to give him like a chance to find a mate but like there's more going on um and yeah Ellie has gone through quite a lot this deals with a lot of like trauma and healing so just be aware of that when you pick this one up but I love it it's like book number like 13 in the series so you do have a ways to go to get to this one but I feel like it is very much worth it. Next I have The Perfect Rake by Anne Gracie. I've been getting into Anne Gracie's books. I love her books. She's a historical romance author and this was just another book available to me on Libby. The first book in another one of her series and I was like why the heck not? Let's Let's pick it up. I really love Anne Gracie's books because it deals a lot with sisterhood. Almost every single series that I've read from her deals a lot with sisterhood. So our heroine in here, Prudence, is the oldest sister of, I think she has four younger sisters, and she is considered like the plain one out of the bunch. She and her sisters have experienced quite a lot of abuse from her grandfather, and so they decide to escape one night and go to her godfather's house in hopes that he will help them find husbands and like have better life. And her godfather is like, okay, I'm gonna help you all find husbands, except like Prudence, you need to go first because you're the plainest out of the bunch. You're the oldest, and I'm not gonna let any of your other sisters find a match until you do. And she's like, gosh, darn. <laughs> like, I was not expecting this. I just wanted my sisters to have husbands. I was just gonna go be a spinster. I was not expecting this. And this is her romance with Lord Caradice, who may or may not be pretending to be a duke <laughs> in this book. So it's actually really fun. I really love this one. It was a great read. I wanted to pick up like a mermaid romance. So I actually picked up a sapphic one. This is Rescued by Mermaids by Katrina Laylock. It's literally only like 50 pages long, but it was a fun quick read. Our heroine um, gets sucked into the ocean and like loses the current and kind of like gets swept up um, while she's paddle boarding or in a canoe or something like that. And um, this mermaid ends up saving her and they have like a grand old time together in her cave. Um, it's actually really fun and very hot for a sapphic read. It is just like a fun little slice of life moment because it's only like 50 pages. But if you want like a fun sapphic like novella about mermaids, I recommend this one. This one is about mermaids, has plus size representation, it's sapphic and it is a novella. I decided to take a gander at my physical TBRs, So I decided to pick up the audiobook for With Love from Cold World by Alicia Thompson. I also wanted to read more of a colder book when I'm in Texas in the summer because it is obviously awful here absolutely awful when it comes to the weather. But this was such an enjoyable read. I think I would have appreciated more if I did read it when it's like colder outside because it's a great atmospheric read. This one's about Lauren and Asa. They work at this kind of like amusement place called Cold World, which is a place people can go to in Florida <laughs> if they want to experience like snow and cold things. Like it's kind of like just like a fun amusement place. Um, She works in the financial department, whereas like he's kind of like the do whatever kind of guy like bumps around does, does all different types of jobs at the park. They don't really like each other. Um, they're not their biggest fans. Um, Asa thinks that Lauren is very uptight and Lauren thinks that Asa is too silly and doesn't take himself seriously at all. Um, so there is like that like witty banter dynamic between them and things kind of change between the two of them when they're stuck in cold world together overnight. Like things like completely shift for them and it was that, that seems very good. Um, but yeah, I actually thought this was really fun. I really enjoyed it. So if you want a book to add to your like December TBR, I do recommend this one. We're going in here for parents kicking the hero out when he comes out. So the hero is by and when he was a teenager. He came out to his parents and they kicked him out of the house. So please be aware of that. Trigger warning for foster care. The heroine grew up in foster care and uh, parental death. Her mother died. Tropes. You have an amusement park setting by representation. Christmas books, because it does take place during a Christmas setting. LGBTQ romance. Opposites attract a winter read and a workplace romance. I love when my Libby adds alien romances to 
their their library um i like check my libby every single tuesday if you didn't know libby updates their books every tuesday at least mine does and so around like noon time on tuesdays i always go check my libby to see their new editions and so when i saw a new alien romance series i was like yes i don't even know what this is about but alien romance yes um this is alien protector's mate by melissa emerald this is the first book in her faded mates of the winged barbarian series i saw barbarian and alien and i was like same less. So this is the classic case of women get kidnapped from Earth and the evil aliens who kidnapped them, their spaceship ends up crash landing on a planet full of good aliens, which happens to be our heroes who have never seen a woman before in their entire lives. And they're like, oh my gosh, what is going on? <laughs> um, anyway, so these are like winged aliens, which I love me a winged man. Love it. So this was great. This does have the faded mate trope. I think all the other books in the series will as well. So this one's about Rin and Serena. It was a great start to a series. I think I'm just going to read the other books because they're fun. They kind of remind me of IPB in a sense. Tropes for this one, alien romance, um, barbarians, faded mates, there is a language barrier, which y'all know is like a favorite of mine, a possessive hero, a virgin hero, and Winx. Winx has its own trope for me, obviously. Next I have Savor It by Tara DeWitt. This one has been all the buzz since its release and I am so excited that I finally read it. I love Tara DeWitt's books. I think I've read all of her books at this point now. I think I'm all caught up. And this one was such a fun read. I really enjoyed this one. So our heroine of this story, she has a little like homestead, like farm place in this small town. She's a school teacher. She's off for the summer and she gets a new neighbor who happens to be our hero, who is a renowned chef and his niece that he just got custody of because his sister passed away. She's like a teenager. So I love that dynamic because a lot of like guardian, like single dad romances, like the kids are always younger, which don't get me don't get me wrong, I love. But I love how we got like a new spin on it where you have like an older character. And it's about the heroine, the quirky little heroine and this broody chef hero falling in love with each other. I really related to both of these characters in a lot of ways, especially the hero, like him feeling lost in his career. Like dude, I feel you, hardcore. So um, I did love this one. I gave it five stars. It was great. It was great. I don't really want to say anything else because I don't want to spoil it, but I loved it. Tropes for this one, books with pets. The heroine has a lot of animals, a lot of pets. Um, caretaking scenes, really good, really good, okay. Um, fake dating because uh, he really wants to have the restaurant that he's going to help open, like do well. So he's like, oh my gosh, if I like fake date you, maybe like I'll be in better standing with like the people in the town who don't want my restaurant to be here. But neighbors, romance, opposites attract, single parent slash guardian, a small town romance, and a summer read. We also had the novellathon in the month of June, which was so fun. We did a pride theme. And I actually host this readathon with Rachel from Rachel Rids and Sings, Samantha from Books with Samantha, and Tiffany from Tiff Talks Pages. So all four of us host this readathon. I was a bad host this <laughs> this year. Um, I have been in a kind of like like a bookish slump a little bit um and I literally read like only one book and got halfway through another one so I ended up finishing the other book by the end of the month um but the only one that I finished is like a two-hour audiobook this is The Duke's Twin by Lauren Smith basically our hero is the brother to a duke and the duke really wants to marry this woman, but he wants the woman to fall in love with who he is, not his title. So he asks his brother to switch places with him while this woman and her family visit. And so the hero is pretending to be his brother, the duke. And while he's pretending to be the duke, he ends up falling for the woman that his brother's in love with sister. And so she thinks she's falling in love with the duke. So like, yeah, they're identical twins also, by the way, these two men, so. It gets really complicated, but it's actually a really fun, like cool, quick, short read. So this one is has a hidden identity trope. It's a historical novella, historical romance, and just a novella. So I had a great time with this. It's really short. It was great for this novella fun. <laughs> Next I read Wicked Devil by Daniela Romero. I've been wanting to read more sports romances, so I decided to pick this one up. This one actually takes place in high school where um, our hero and all of his friends are football players. And our heroine is new to the school, new to town. Her mother recently passed and she's having to move in with her father, who she does not know at all. This one it reads very much like new adult. So if you're wanting like a new adult read, I definitely recommend this one. You have like a bad boy football player falls for the like new girl in school, which can be pretty fun. The book that I got halfway through the novelathon and then I finished it <laughs> is Perfect Matcha by Erin McClellan. This was our group pick. <laughs> I ended up finishing it later on. But yeah, this one was so fun. So I love Erin McClellan's books. I think Sam picked this book out for us to read and I'm so glad she did because we both like love her books. So does Rachel, so does Tiffany. Like we all love 
Aaron's books. This is a friends to lovers romance where our two heroes have been friends for quite some time and they both have been like hardcore crushing on each other. One has more of an unrequited crush on the other, honestly. Theo, our more shy one out of the two, decides that he really wants to get into dating. He asks his friend to help him do that. And so he's gonna help teach him how to use certain things because um, the other hero works at a certain type of store where they sell certain types of toys. And so he's gonna help him teach him how to use them. <laughs> so it's actually really fun, really hot. I had a great time with this. This is Friends to Lovers. It's an MM romance. It's a novella and toys are used in here. <laughs> we have two more rereads because Tiffany and I run the Beam Me Up book club, which is an alien romance book club. And we're in the middle of our Horde Kings of Nakar read along. Um, so the books for June were Madness of the Horde King, book number three, and Broken by the Horde King, which is book number four, my favorite. So I love this series so much. And if you already love fantasy romances, you need to read these. They're so good. They read like fantasy books. They just take place on a different planet. Like they're so stinking good. This one is about a guy who thinks he's like going crazy because he, he can see dead people, but he might not know that it's actually like maybe his secret power. And he falls for this human woman who might have some powers of her own. Okay. And then this one is a childhood friends to enemies to lovers romance. It's like one of my favorite books of all time. I love it so much. I loved seeing Tiffany's like reactions to both of these. I loved, I loved just talking about these books with her. They were so fun. I'll link our live show down below if you have not checked it out yet. But yeah, we're going to be reading our last two books in this series in July. So stay tuned for that. And to the last book that I ended up reading in June is a doozy. This is Hideaway by Penelope Douglas. This is the next book in the Devil's Night series. I read Corrupt a few months ago and became like obsessed with it. Um, it was very dark. These are dark romances, by the way. And um, I've been wanting to read them for a while because I know McKay loves them. And I've been wanting to read them because I specifically wanted to read book number three because I knew book number three had disability representation and dealt with a very tortured hero. So I just wanted to get to book number three, honestly. So um, I'm in the middle of book number three right now and it is not disappointing me. It's really good. Anyway, <laughs> Hideaway is Kai's story, who is one of the devils okay and this is his romance with banks who is someone he has a little bit of a history with and i can't really talk about these books like at all it kind of revolves around devil's night which is what these heroes call halloween something happened a few years ago on devil's night when they were out doing stuff on devil's night three out of the four guys were arrested and have been in jail for a few years and um kai was one of the guys who was put in jail um and he is out now and He's gonna get his woman basically by whatever means necessary um so it's really good i had a great time with this anyways there you have it those are all the books that i ended up reading last month in june let me know down below if you've read any of these books or if you plan to and if you don't feel like commenting any of those things you can leave me oh, what emoji we're we gonna do is there a castle emoji i kind of want to do a castle do a castle emoji and if not do some other form of building <laughs> Anyways, uh, thank you all so, so much for watching. I will see you all soon in my next one. Bye all.